And here we are back again. Um, and Eleanor, I, I've heard her speak, and I was just so, uh, I found it very interesting, the work that she does in, uh, on behalf of an organization. She's an affiliate um, uh, member. Not member, you're an affiliate. Like the affiliate leader. Leader, of leader of the, of the Capital District uh, chapter. Um, and this is called the Final Exit Network. And uh, if you're wondering about the name, it, it's a way of, uh, when she came and spoke to a group that I was at, I loved it that she brought all these forms about, you know, getting your forms, getting everything in order, getting your right. will in order, uh, kind of getting ready because, let's face it, we got to leave here. I talk about the subject that nobody wants to talk about. We okay. all leave this earth dead. Nobody leaves it alive. Yeah. So after all these Hopefully wonderful <laughs> programs yeah. about strawberries and wonderful books, I'm here to tell you that we're all going to die at some point, hopefully not too close, but you need to be prepared and I represent Final Exit Network, which is an organization that believes people should take control of how they die. Ahead of time. Ahead of time, yeah. absolutely. I mean, not, not leave it to somebody else. Right. So there are really two organizations in the capital area that uh, focus on this topic. One is Compassion and Choices, which is a national organization. They do wonderful education programs, but they also work toward the passage of laws which will allow physicians to prescribe medication to people who are within six months of dying. And, and many of the, the conditions that people are in are, are they're in a horrible state, a horrible right. state, and they don't want to go on. Right. And you know, the idea of, I mean, we are so compassionate when it comes to our dog, right? right? I mean, I don't mean to, to drop it to that level, but we care about that, and yet we don't always wish, we don't always accept the wishes of the person. Well, Anne, you have actually talked about something that energized me. Uh, what animated me was when my mother died of ovarian cancer decades ago. She was tethered to machines, she was miserable, she was in physical distress for 11 months. And 11 I was, months? 11 oh months. And, and I was unable to do anything to alleviate right. and I felt very guilty. When my beloved golden retriever was at the end of her days, I, I took her to the vet, I held her gently, and the vet administered a barbiturate, which mm. let my dog slip peacefully away. And that was a moment where it crystallized. People should have this right. And actually, in the United States now, there are seven states plus the District of Columbia where physician aid in dying is legal. It is legal in Canada. It yeah, is and I know I had a friend that was, he had the most peaceful death that he wanted. That's exactly what he wanted. Right. So you have to make preparation. With his family all around him. And, Absolutely. And it was, it was a very peaceful. Right. But Americans tend to defer these decisions. Well, so we don't want to talk. My father, with a will. Dad, did you get a will? Well, uh, yeah. Right. He couldn't do it. Now, I mean, I've had a will for I don't know how long. Once you have kids, you think I better have a will. Do you have a living? will? I have a living will. And I have a health care proxy. Yeah, health care. Pro I've got okay. it all. I have an attorney I work with. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's important to put your wishes in writing. It's important to tell your closest family members what you want. If you want to be cremated, tell them that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's important to support both Compassion and Choices and perhaps Final Exit Network, uh, which, which has a slightly different mission. Final Exit Network educates, but it also provides a direct company at the end of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it, it teaches people how to achieve the and end that they want. everybody's a volunteer. Yes, They're all volunteers. absolutely. Volunteer. And it's, it's that peacefulness that, that uh, and I, I, know, I have two people that I know of, one had ALS and he wanted to go oh, yeah. so badly, but at that point he, there was nothing he could do. Right. And something else I'd like to mention is that there is currently a bill in the New York State Assembly and Senate, and if you are in favor of physician aid in dying, you need to contact your state assembly person or your state senator. Um, the, the bill is, and I have here, uh, it is, oh dear, where is it? Was it, was it is S3151. That's the Senate, okay. And A2383. Are the bills the same? 
Yes, they are identical. Yeah, because that's always a problem when no. one is different than the other. And re reconciliation, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. No, and actually the uh, Health Committee and the Assembly held, a, held two hearings on the bill. About 70% of New Yorkers approve yeah, of physician aid and dying. Yeah, I know they do. I know they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 mentioned, I may have mentioned this to you before. Um, I saw the movie Soylent Green, and Edward G. Robinson in it is, just, you know, he's going to go through the, the process, and he, of his own he, his selection of dying, and it was, I go, that's the way I want to go. It was like he had the music he wanted, and he had, everything was just perfect, and right. he was just at peace with it, and I thought, you know, sometimes we allow people to be hooked up in hospitals with wires and they don't want to be there and they're miserable and they just say, let me out of here. Right. And uh, we have to have that option. But it, we're not talking about, uh, oh, I'm disgusted with this, that, and I want to do it. No, no, this has to do with illness at six months and there's a lot of, and you have to have so many people. I mean, there's a lot to this. This isn't just random. This is not capricious. No. This is not uh, lighthearted. This is people who are facing a terminal illness which will end their lives, which will cause pain and suffering, which has no pretty end, and this is giving them a, a civilized, compassionate alternative. Dignity. dignity. I call it dignity. And, and that is what the movement is called. It's the Death with Dignity movement. Yeah. And it's a new movement. It yeah. really started in the 1980s. Uh, with the publication of Final Exit by Derek Humphrey. Right, right. And it's morphed since then. So it, it's an important part of life. I just have to say who's coming up, and then we'll finish our interview okay. here. The Electric City Barn next week. The Electric City Barn, that's a, uh, an artist collaborative. Maple Ridge Greenhouse. Uh, Schenectady Police will be here to talk about the active shooter program, and we're going to be talking about responding to that. Run, hide, and fight. Those are the options, and you do them in that order. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about Schenectady Rotary with their 100-year celebration, and Waterford Museum will be on to talk about their events as well. I want to compliment you on uh, taking on a task like this because it's not a task that people want to hear about. That is very true. So it's not like, oh, Eleanor, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> You're going to be talking about final... No, no. But but I do this as a, a tribute to I my know. mother yeah. because I wasn't able to do it for her when she really needed it. Right, right. And, and, and we talked about, you know, the, the animal. I held my cat in, at the veterinary's office uh, because I would not let that my cat die alone. You know, when I do a presentation before groups, one of my slides says, please let me die like a dog. <laughs> That's pretty good. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I know my cat, it was just one of those things. I thought. I, knew, I mean, cancer, terrible cancer and everything. And it was like, I could keep this cat alive, but why, you know, the cat won, wanted to go, you could tell. It, it's an act of cruelty. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. So I want to thank you for being here well, uh, today and uh, talking about that. And I understand your husband is going to come on the show maybe and talk about... Well, you'll have to talk. I'll have to, to talk to him first. Yeah, he's uh, going to talk about electricity, maybe. Are you out there? I think he's he, out he's there. He's out so there, and he's, he's probably ready to I think he's probably, he's got this funny look <laughs> on his face, so I'm not sure. Do talk to him. <laughs> yeah, I will. This is how I get my guests. I coerce them. So anyway. that, that was a surprise attack. <laughs> that was. <laughs> I do it all. Uh, thank you for watching Schenectady today in and around the Capital Region. We are so happy that you're joining us today, and please join us again next week where we have another great lineup. I'm Ann Perl, your host.